Many headaches seem to arise from childhood trauma, which drives a physical change in the way our bodies respond to stress. Dr. Gretchen Tejan tells us the facts and figures, while Dr. Linda Carpenter explains the neurobiological link, and Dr. Elliot Shulman puts it all in clinical perspective. We also found that in people that had abuse, that they were more likely to have chronic migraines, meaning frequent, disabling migraines, meaning severe, and also they were more likely to have some of the things we commonly associate with migraine comorbidities such as depression, anxiety, and other pain disorders. That is suggestive of the fact that there may be some kind of a biological link between these two um, things. And there are probably other things that play a role um, because it's certainly not everyone that has had a stressful life experiences in children have problems with headache or have problems with any other you know, health issues or psychiatric issues. Although observational studies can't prove a link between early abuse and later migraines, Dr. Carpenter has some theories about a neurobiological underpinning. My particular uh, lab's work has been involved in testing some of those hypotheses in human subjects and healthy human subjects so we can see if we can test those relationships. So for example, can you see evidence of a link between early life stress with abnormal um, release of cortisol and other stress hormones when a person is exposed to a new stress challenge? Um, and can you see evidence that that in turn is associated with a dysfunctional immune system, either a, a chronic inflammatory state, even in the absence of an active infection, um, or whether somebody has a diminished or inadequate ability to respond physiologically to a challenge. And I think some of the most elegant work um, has taught us that, and particularly in animals, and now increasingly a little bit in humans, that events of the environment are incorporated um, into the DNA through modifications, which is sort of a new area, a very exciting new area called epigenetics. And that you not only can have transmitted from your environment some effects to your biology and your physiology and how you'll approach stress for the rest of your life, but in addition, these effects can be transmitted across generations so that the uh, environment of a mother uh, modifies DNA that in turn will modify the way the physiology of the next generation and the next generation and the next of offspring will um, respond when they encounter acute stress challenge. What practical applications do these theories have in the clinic? Dr. Elliot Schulman shares his thoughts. You need to be a detective and you need to look at all the pieces of the puzzle. It's important for the physician to ask about it, acknowledge it, and address it if they're able. The way that I do it is I send patients a questionnaire which they can fill out um, at their leisure and on the questionnaire I specifically ask if they have been abused and that sends a message to the patient that I'm going to be asking about that when I sit down with them. If the abuse is ongoing and your patient doesn't feel safe you've got to get an abuse advocate on board who can help the patient and set up a safety plan or a safe house. If the abuse has occurred in the past I find that a lot of times I am the first person to ask them about it and I'm also the first one who they've told about it. And when that happens, oftentimes you get a very emotional response. And to me that that's a, a, a note that this patient has, has not resolved this issue and um, I spend a few minutes talking to them about it. and making sure that we, we need to address it so that they can uh, resolve it as best that they can. I think it also sends a message to patients that I want to be their advocate, that I am not interested only in their headache, but I want to look at all the other pieces that are contributing to their headache. And I think it really does improve uh, doctor-patient relationship. And I think they have trust that I am going to do the very best that I can to get them better.